So it's like ages ago that we did a Lexus video for Car Buyer. Actually, the last one we did was for the ES, which was two years ago before I even joined Car Buyer. The one before that was the UX, it was three years ago. Actually, the latest Lexus was the electric version of that. And that was very beautifully reviewed by our friends over at Driving Electric. So if you want to watch that, click up there, please. And now we have this brand new Lexus NX. Well, 95% new, but new enough for us. So, brand new Lexus. Mind if I browse you? As we said, Lexus claims this new NX is 95% new. And while that may not be immediately obvious, if you stand the two side by side or compare them on screen like this, you can see the more assertive design cues. Still recognizably Lexus, but a Lexus for the new generation. But if you think the changes on the outside are a bit, well, tame, then wait till you see in the cabin. Oh, would you look at this? I mean, I know sometimes we use Lexus as a quality benchmark, and when you sit in here, you can see why. Now, quality is one thing. In old Lexuses, there was always the nice, soft, squishy materials and nice finishes. But also in old Lexuses, there was also not very good infotainment systems that are difficult to use and no Android Auto or Apple Car Play. But gone is the bouncy mouse-like trackpad, and instead we have this super crisp giant touchscreen that's 14 inches on top spec models and it just looks really lovely but hold your horses because Lexus call this the Tazuna cockpit which means everything has to be to hand and everything has to be in your eye line and it is I mean this centre console being high up means a gear lever is exactly where you want it to be driving position also very lovely I mean, I know the infotainment system is all touchscreen, but there's some nice little buttons elsewhere as well, included here in the door handle, like electric, like in the BMW iX. Instead of having a pull-out handle, a button. Safer, apparently. And there's also some more little buttons elsewhere, including twiddly climate controls. Thank you, Lexus. I like it. <sighs> hey, if you like this video, Give us a like, subscribe to the Car Buyer YouTube channel, click on the bell icon so you get notifications every time a new video goes live. God, that was so slick. Almost as slick as this interior. <sighs> At launch, there are four basic specs, NX, Premium, F-Sport, like this, and Takumi. Of course, full details can be found at carbuyer.co.uk, but if you're simply looking for which we think represents the best value for money, then we'd opt for the Premium model. Lexus clearly thinks so too. It's expected to amount for up to 40% of sales. This version adds things like privacy glass, keyless entry, and a heated steering wheel to the standard car's heated leather seats, electric tailgate, and reversing camera. Actually, the kit list is pretty generous, whichever model you go for. Though we do like our car's sporty F-Sport styling. Okay, and here we are on the road. This is the standard hybrid, so it's the NX350H. But actually, for the first time, the NX also comes as a plug-in hybrid. It's called the 450H Plus. Now, that's going to cost you an extra £9,000, spec for spec, so it's probably worth checking that you can recoup the money by, like, reduced company car tax or just making sure that you plug in regularly before you sign on the dotted line. Now, underneath this bonnet, we've got a 2.5 litre petrol engine and an electric motor. True, the plug-in hybrid is a little bit more powerful, but the NX isn't the sharpest tool in the box. That is the BMW X3. So if you're quite happy to take things that little bit more gentle, then this standard hybrid has more than enough power, 241 brake horsepower, it does feel quick enough. I mean, it'll do 0 to 62 in 7.7 .7 seconds, 6.3 if you're in the FEV. But because it has got the electric motor, it does just pick up and go. The CVT Auto still just isn't the nicest thing to use. I mean, I know they are getting better and they're fine when they're cruising and when they're going between traffic lights and it's just the electric motor. But when you put your foot down because you want to overtake someone or join onto a motorway, the revs just flare and the engine just sounds that little bit coarse, you know? But hey, owners tend not to moan about it, so we're not going to dwell on it too much. <laughs> 
elsewhere, grip is very good. This is the E4 all-wheel drive. You can get a front-wheel drive uh, for a thousand pounds less. And actually, steering's very nice. Nice and precise. Very little body roll. Actually, they can thank the Toyota RAV4 for that because it shares the same basic platform and a lot of its parts with that very car. But the NX's best attribute, certainly in terms of the driving perspective, is refinement. I mean, this car is so lovely and quiet. It's not even the plug-in hybrid. If you remove the engine from the equation, everything just is even more hushed. Oh, with this lovely plush cabin, this is a very luxurious car to be in. We mentioned that the plug-in is almost £10,000 more than the normal hybrid, but Lexus claims up to 40 miles of electric running plus significantly lower CO2 emissions. Those numbers will make a big difference in company car tax. Higher rate taxpayers could slash their annual bill by as much as 70%. But in day-to-day -day running, this hybrid is impressively efficient. Lexus claims around 47 miles per gallon, with CO2 emissions of between 129 and 136 grams per kilometre, depending on whether you go for the front or four-wheel drive car. Yep your passengers are going to be very happy back here. I mean, the panoramic sunroof makes it feel so much more spacious in here, even though it's already spacious. It's lovely. I mean, you've got some more squishies here. Again, the buttons for the door handle, but legroom. I've got legroom for days. I mean, look at that. I'm five foot six. That's lovely. Oh, and heated seats. Treat yourself. Things are just as wonderful here in the boot. Ta-da! 520 litres. Now look, if 520 litres doesn't actually mean anything to you, and why would it? Because it's not like you think in bottles of milk. Rest assured, it is bang on for its class. So it's basically the same size as a BMW X3, as a Mercedes GLC. It's a bit bigger than a Volvo XC60. Oh, and if you go for the plug-in hybrid, space under the boot floor for your cables. You fold down the seats and it will give you even more space, but they don't fold down flat. Naughty, naughty Lexus. Okay then, shall we do some Lexus NX deal makers and deal breakers? Even the standard hybrid is super quiet and refined. Go for the plug-in and that attribute is intensified. We've mentioned Lexus's squishy materials before and this NX feels as beautifully built as any we've driven to date. This cabin is a revolution too. When it comes to efficiency, you may not be able to get a pure electric NX, but real-world economy in this thing is hard to beat. What's not so good is the price. Well, actually, uh, that's not true. The standard hybrid isn't too expensive, but you'll pay nine grand more for the plug-in. But company car drivers will save a packet in tax. Take it gently, and we've got no complaints. But when you put your foot down, the CVT isn't the best. If you want a driver's SUV, then the BMW X3 is better anyway. Well, I never. Well done, Lexus. It might have felt like you've been twiddling your thumbs for a while, waiting for a new Lexus video for car buyer, but I think it was worth the wait. This new NX is definitely up there with the best cars in its class. It offers something a little bit different. It's unconventional. It's refined, it's quiet, it's efficient, it's luxurious, it's very Lexus. And I like it. And that cabin is a masterpiece. I can't wait to see that dashboard in the UX, the ES and the RX. Go on, Lexus, you got this. Yes. If you like this video, then why not watch our review of the Volvo XC60 or our family SUVs playlist. Thanks for watching.